Hello, today we're going to show a case of chondroblastoma. We have AP view of the shoulder in external rotation and we see a lesion at the proximal humerus at the humeral head. Let's describe this lesion. So this lesion is well defined and mostly loosened. It has some internal calcification which is matrix and in this case it's chondroid matrix because it's rings and arcs and some people would describe it as popcorn calcification. Also, the lesion has a well-defined border with a very narrow zone of transition, and the border is chlorotic. So it means that the lesion is not aggressive because that sclerotic border means that the surrounding bone has been able to stop the lesion. Also, the lesion is within the epiphysis and does not appear to cross into the metaphysis. This patient is an adult with the growth plate already closed. However, you can still see some faint sclerotic line where the growth plate was, so this patient is likely young, maybe 20 years old. Another important thing that we need to evaluate whenever we see a lesion at the end of the bone is to make sure that the other side of the articulation has no abnormality. We want to evaluate this because lesions at the end of the bone are either lesions of the bone or abnormalities of the articulation that extend into the bone. And the best way to evaluate for any articular process is to make sure that both sides of the articulations are involved. In this case, the glenoid looks normal, so this is most likely a lesion of the end of the bone. Here we have MRI images of the same patient, and we have coronal T2 with fat suppression, coronal T1, and axial T1 with fat suppression after the articular injection of gadolinium. We again seen the well-defined lesion with the sclerotic borders, both on T2 and T1, which is the sclerosis. It also extends into the subchondral plate, and it's very interesting that the inferior aspect of the lesion of the subchondral plate, you cannot really see the well-defined subchondral uh, calcification or border. So this lesion is likely extending into articulation. And that is evident also because it has a small effusion and some enhancement of the synovium in the glenohumeral joint. Note that this lesion has edema surrounding the lesion with this increased feathery T2 signal intensity. Also, we can see the chondroid matrix as low signal intensity in all sequences because it's calcification and it shows that low signal intensity. The key points with a chondroblastoma is a benign tumor which is composed of chondroblasts. Usually it's seen in skeletally immature patients with open physis or growth plate. This patient is rather the exception, uh, but it's still a young patient we could, because we can still see some of the uh, linear sclerosis where the growth plate was. In imaging, it's a lesion in the epiphysis with well-defined sclerotic borders, which means that it's non-aggressive. It may or may not have chondroid matrix. It usually stays within the physis, and MRI shows uh, extensive perilational edema. The treatment for this lesion is surgical with curettage, and the differential diagnosis is that of epiphyseal lesions, which include giant cell tumor, eosinophilic granuloma, clear sarcoma, Brody sepsis, and other common things that will go anywhere in the body like leukemia and lymphoma. Now we're going to compare the chondroblastoma to the Janssen tumor because uh, they ask this a lot in the test because they're both epiphyseal lesions. So let's evaluate the difference between the two. So chondroblastoma usually happens in young patients with open physis. Obviously, this is the exception, but you most of the time gonna see it in patients that are pediatric and you're gonna see an open growth plate. Giant cell tumor usually happens in patients with a closed growth plate, uh, usually patients in their 30s and 40s. They're both APVC lesions, but the chondroblastoma shows well-defined sclerotic borders and giant cell tumor shows well-defined non-sclerotic borders. Also, giant cell tumor, may extend into the metaphysis and chondroblastoma usually does not extend into the metaphysis. Also chondroblastoma may show internal chondroid matrix and the giant cell tumor shows no matrix at all. The treatment is both surgical, both have uh, curettage and, and packing if needed. Uh, the recurrent rate, rate in giant cell tumor is higher than in chondroblastoma, uh, up to 40%. And also in MRI, uh, the giant cell tumor may show fluid, fluid levels, and the chondroblastoma shows some perilational edema. So there you have it, the difference between chondroblastoma and giant cell tumor. Thank you for listening. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like and subscribe. Also, you can follow me on Instagram 
at MSK Radiology Genie.